Thank you so much uh, for taking time out of your busy schedules to be able to talk about one of the most critical transportation projects in the Bay Area, and that is the Highway 37 corridor. Tonight, we're going to actually have some good news to deliver this evening, uh, and it is going to be the comprehensive action plan on the Marin section of Highway 37. Uh, we have a packed agenda with transportation leaders from around California and right here at home in Marin County. Uh, my name is Mike McGuire. I'm honored to be able to work with you in the State Senate, and I'm also honored to be able to partner with Supervisor Judy Arnold to be able to bring forward this forum here this evening. And I want to take a moment to say thank you to the Supervisor for all of our work, and let's give her a round of applause, please. Thank you, Supervisor. Before we get into our agenda tonight, we'd like to be able to welcome Mayor Lucan from the City of Novato to be able to provide us some briefing on the importance of Highway 37 to the city. We are then going to hear from Supervisor Arnold to talk about this critical transportation corridor and its importance to the County of Marin. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to turn the floor over to Mayor Eric Lucan. Uh, thank you, Senator McGuire. Uh, on behalf of the City of Novato and the City Council, we want to welcome you all here, especially we want to welcome the Senator for hosting this meeting and bringing us all together this evening. Uh, I want to just uh, quickly introduce a couple of others that are uh, here. We'll hear some introductions of our panel as the evening goes on. Uh, but one of my colleagues on the City Council, Pat Eklund, is here. Uh, uh, also want to recognize Councilmember Holly Teer from Tiburon. I saw Lorenzo Cordova, who is an aide to Supervisor Radoni. County of Marin was here. And I also saw Farhad Manzurian, the general manager of SMART. So on, on behalf of the city of Nevada, we're really excited to be able to uh, host this right here in Nevada and really thank our amazing uh, super host, uh, Senator Mike McGuire and Supervisor Judy Arnold for bringing us all together this evening. Uh, you, we all know the impacts that Highway 37 has had and the closures have had uh, over the past several years. Uh, and beyond just the loss of productivity and 45,000 vehicles not being able to, to go their normal route uh, to and from jobs and school and other places, uh, those cars get routed through city streets in Nevada that are not designed for that level of traffic. And we're not just talking block driveways, we're talking in entire communities uh, that have a wall of cars in front of them. And even during the past closure, uh, real safety concerns uh, as cars have to traverse over smart railroad tracks, um, sometimes stopped on the tracks as they're trying to figure out where they're going and navigating through city streets. So we all know the significant impacts it has on the city of Novato. All of that's happening during peak commute times as uh, parents are trying to get their kids to school, uh, as, as professionals are trying to get to their jobs. Um, so I'm really excited that we have an incredible panel here tonight, and we have some great news, and I, I just can't thank uh, the S Senator McGuire enough for uh, bringing us all together this evening. And um, I'm going to then turn the floor over to our second super host of the evening, which is Supervisor Judy Arnold. Give her a hand. Hello, everybody. It's great to see so many familiar faces here. When Novato experienced its major flooding on Highway 37, for many of us, it was the first time we had seen flooding on 37. Senator McGuire was the first to call me in, in Novato. We did a first-hand look at the flooding, and from that time in 2017, including the flooding last winter, the Senator has worked tirelessly to address this flooding situation for the present and long-range solution. And if you know him, Mike McGuire is no shrinking violet. He he, if there's a problem, he wants it addressed and solved, and he gets it done really fast, which is why we are here tonight. So tonight, he's going to give to meet with state and regional agencies that are going to give us a report and I'm so happy to turn this meeting over to Senator McGuire with deep appreciation. Thank you so much, Supervisor. You are too kind, and let's be honest, this has been an all-hands-on-deck effort, and just want to say thank you, Supervisor. You have been all over this from the very beginning. Thank you to the Mayor and to our esteemed panel who are here tonight. Um, we wouldn't be here tonight, candidly, uh, without the partnership 
the partnership to be able to present all of you concrete solutions on a comprehensive Marin Highway 37 action plan. Uh, and without an all hands on deck effort by several agencies who you're gonna hear from tonight, over these past many months, we wouldn't be able to talk about real change. I wanna take a moment to better say thank you to Supervisor Arnold and the entire county of Marin, Caltrans, especially our district director who is new in this job. And one of the first issues that he faced was the flooding on Highway 37. Uh, and I've never heard the words come from his mouth uh, like I've heard that night. Um, <laughs> We want to take a moment to say thank you to the California Transportation Commission, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, the Transport Transportation Authority of Marin, the Sonoma County Transportation Authority, and the City of Novato for their uh, partnership. And again, if we can give all of these folks a round of applause because it has been all hands on deck. I think you all agree that Highway 37 is one of the most important transportation corridors in the entire Bay Area. We know nearly 50,000 vehicles traverse the highway each workday, and we've all become too familiar with the challenges that exist with the highway. Over a two-year period, the highway has been closed a whopping 20 days due to flooding. That flooding, which has led to the closure of Highway 37, has had a domino effect, a domino effect on Bay Area highways, causing massive backups as far away as the Embarcadero in San Francisco. And what we know is that weary commuters simply want to get home and they want to get to and from work. Thousands of hours have been wasted and those hours have racked up. Residents deserve better. They deserve better than the normal annual fire drill of keeping this highway open. That said, I do want to take a moment to say thank you to the Caltrans team who has mobilized each winter, working overtime to try to hold back the rising floodwaters. Flooding on Highway 101 to Black Point on Highway 37 is clearly the new normal. And tonight, it's time for a big fix, which we'd like to be able to outline for you. This is why we wanted to gather this evening to talk about the comprehensive action plan that will be deployed this winter and over the next few years, bringing both short-term and long-term fixes to Highway 37. Tonight, we're gonna take a close look at the issues that are causing the flooding and talk about the solutions that the County of Marin and the State of California and associated agencies will be advancing. I'd like to start with the short term. The District Director for the Bay Area of Caltrans is here, Tony Tavares. He's gonna do a deep dive on the short term, but I'd like to be able to provide a brief overview. Before the rainy season starts, Caltrans is gonna install a temporary flood wall along the highway where the flooding has occurred. Flood wall materials is gonna be pre-staged in both Marin and Sonoma counties and are ready to be deployed. The budget to complete this emergency work has also been secured thanks to our district director, so we won't miss a beat. This along with deploying pumping operations, raising the pavement level in the lowest areas of 37, installing improved drainage and floodgates should help to keep the roadway open during major storm events, again, this is the short-term approach, which will be moving forward literally in the weeks to come. But let's talk about long-term. This is the biggie. How do we permanently fix the highway in light of global sea level rise? It's one of the toughest questions that all of us are gonna face as communities here in the Bay Area. And while countries all over the planet are also working on these problems, we here in the Bay Area are amongst the first to have to address this crisis and tonight, you're gonna to hear about how we're gonna address it head on. We've been working closely with Caltrans and the California Transportation Commission over the last couple of years and have come up with a strategy to fix the highway once and for all. $10 million, $10 million from the California Transportation Commission will fund the environmental studies, select the best project, and get it approved between Highway 101 and Black Point. That $10 million is already in the bank and ready to be used. We also are gonna be announcing tonight a phase two in the initial improvement project, Black Point to Sonoma Raceway. That is also extremely vulnerable to flooding. The total mileage that we're gonna be focusing on is less than 10 miles, but that 10 miles causes a massive backup across the bay each and every year. 
which is why we're going to be talking about phase one, Highway 101, Highway 101 to Black Point, and phase two, Black Point to Sonoma Raceway, about a permanent fix. You're also going to hear tonight from the Metropolitan Transportation Com Commission about their plans to fix the remainder of Highway 37 from Sonoma Raceway to Vallejo. They're going to be providing your damn right. Um, and feel free, because that's one of the worst. Am I right? Uh, we're going to pass around a cuss jar tonight, if you would like to be able to use that, because I know how frustrating it may be. Um, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission is going to be providing a short-term and long-term view of the fixes between Sonoma Raceway and Vallejo. The most important part of tonight, though, it's going to hear from you. If you'd be all right with this, we'd like to be able to have each of our presenters, each of our presenters to be able to present their part of the action plan. Then, if it works, we'd like to be able to open it up for questions, comments, and conversations. We can't say thank you enough. We have a packed room tonight because this is one of the most critical issues facing Marin County and the rest of the San Francisco Bay Area. I would now like to better turn it over to Mitch Weiss. He's the Deputy Director of the California Transportation Commission. The California Transportation Commission is the group responsible for securing the $10 million. We want to say thank you to Mitch and to their Executive Director, Susan Branson, for their incredible support. We also would like to better turn it over to Tony Tabaris. He's the Bay Area District Director for Caltrans, who will be moving forward and implementing both the short and long-term fixes for Highway 37. They're going to go in depth on phase one and phase two, Highway 101 to Black Point, Black Point to Sonoma Raceway, and then we'll turn it over to the MTC, Metropolitan Transportation Commission, to talk about Sonoma Raceway to Vallejo. Without further ado, I'd like to turn the floor over to the Transportation Commission and Caltrans. Thank you again for being here. Hi, I'm Mitch Weiss with the California Transportation Commission. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for inviting us, Senator. Uh, first, most people have never heard of the Transportation Commission. It was created in 1978 by the legislature and Governor Brown out of a desire to have a single unified state transportation policy. We have 13 members. Most of them are appointed by the governor. A couple are appointed by the legislature. And we have three key roles. Uh, we provide advice, funding, and oversight. Uh, it, it's a little bit like, you know, I have two kids home at col in college, and I feel like that's what I do at home, too. Uh, the most relevant thing here is, the, is the, the role of the commission as a funding agency. The commission's responsible for allocating transportation funds for highways, for passenger rail improvements, transit projects, bicycle and pedestrian projects throughout California. The commission recognizes uh, the importance of the project on Highway 37. Uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about the, the flooding already. Uh, you, you all experience that congestion much more than I. When you look at the congestion on Highway 37 measured as the amount of congestion per vehicle mile traveled, it's amongst the most congested highways in the state. Uh, and in that recognition, in June, the commission allocated $10 million for the environmental review of the project. This was a critical next step towards providing a solution to the critical challenges that are being faced on Highway 37. I'll turn it over to Caltrans Director Tony Tavares to go into the details about the project. Thank you very much, Deputy Director Weiss. I also want to thank Senator McGuire for inviting us here tonight. Thank you, Supervisor Arnold. Thank you, and Mary Lucan. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Tony Tavares. I'm the Caltrans Bay Area Director, and it is a great honor to be here to discuss uh, one of our most uh, important interregional routes that we have here in the North Bay, and that's State Route 37, and the issues that we have been experienced doing, due to global sea level rise and climate change issues. I do have a uh, short presentation. I'd like to go ahead and start that. What I'd like to do is talk a little bit about uh, some of the completed improvements we've done on State Route 37, talk about the near-term improvements that includes uh, what we're going to do prior to the winter season, and then talk about, as Senator McGuire mentioned, Phase 1 and Phase 2, we call that Segment A improvements. 
This is a map of the entire corridor of State Route 37 from US 101 on the west, and it goes all the way to uh, Interstate 80 uh, through Vallejo. I'll be addressing the purple section, which is segment A from Marin County into Sonoma County to just about the Sears uh, Point race, waste, Raceway, excuse me, State Route 121. Obviously, many of you who live in the area and travel on 37, you, you know that in 2017, we had some flooding caused uh, by a levee failure. Um, at that time, State Route 37 was closed for over 14 days. Uh, however, uh, Caltrans uh, worked with our transportation partners to reopen that highway as quickly as possible. And uh, some of the improvements that we installed to reopen that highway uh, include, uh, we raised the highway by up to two feet for about 1,200 feet uh, near Nevada Creek. We constructed a 1,500 foot concrete flood wall. Uh, we added drainage improvements, uh, including four slide gates so that we could control the water from one area to another section. And we restored um, and repaired some of the damaged levees that were in, in two locations there along the state highway. Obviously, two years later, we had a similar situation, 2019. We had additional flooding. We had two separate times during uh, this past winter that we had flooding uh, due to more levee failures. Caltrans working with our partners here in Marin County, as well as SMART, as well as uh, the state, uh, Supervisor Arnold, uh, several partners all working together. Uh, we, were, we had uh, two incidents, one that lasted five days, another week later that lasted three days. Uh, but we were able to construct some temporary flooding dams that we put out there to hold back the water. And then we paved many of the low spots up to nine inches for about 3,200 feet or close to about two thirds of a mile uh, east of the Novato Creek this time. So fast forward to this fall and where we're at now. I think this time we're actually in a much better position than we were last year because we actually still have our contractor on call with us and we have a lot of the materials needed to put additional flood walls and barriers in place as quickly as possible. We monitor the weather situation uh, through Doppler radar and through our, um, we have our own Doppler radar as well as watching our, our local media, but we usually know within three to five days of, of a significant storm event, and we can place these temporary barriers and these flood barriers out in a matter of hours. So it's a very quick operation, and as the Senator mentioned, we are staging these barriers on the Marin side as well as on the Sonoma County side. So uh, we will be very quick and nimble in getting these out when necessary. Also want to mention what we're starting right now is we are going to install some additional drainage improvements on the north side of 37 and put some additional slide gates so that we can actually equalize the water from one area to another area and prevent the flooding of Highway 37. So that's going to be very important this year. Uh, also what we're planning to do is we're going to, going to raise the highway by up to another foot. Uh, so we will be beginning paving operations within the next couple of weeks. You will see us out there working, doing the paving operations within the, the next couple of weeks, as well as doing all the drainage improvements. And we hope to have everything completed before the end of October. And uh, with that and our temporary uh, flood uh, walls that we will have ready to go in case we have a very significant storm event, we feel very um, secure, if you will, that we will be able to handle the situation and hopefully prevent any further flooding this season. In addition, we have purchased some uh, tractor-based pumps that will help us so that we can move water from uh, one area to another area and keep it off our roadway. That will be significant as well, and those will be ready to be deployed at a moment's notice. So where I'd like to go now, um, this just shows some of the, the 
photographs of what we plan to do, the slide gates, some of the paving operations, which we will begin in the next couple of weeks. What I'd like to do now is talk about the phase one and the phase two longer term improvements. And I would like to again thank the California State Transportation Commission for awarding us the $10 million so that we can do the environmental engineering studies that are needed for this phase. Uh, we are looking right now at two potential viable alternatives for this segment between 101 and Black Point. And that is either a large embankment where we would raise the roadway by up to 15 feet in elevation, or we would do what's called a viaduct or a causeway. It's basically a bridge that would go from 101 to Black Point. And, and that too, yes, you can clap, that's good. And that too would raise the elevation of the roadway by up to 15 feet. So we're, we're going, to, going to begin the environmental studies and engineering studies on both of those, uh, determine uh, which is the most viable alternative, working with our resource and environmental agencies in the area. Uh, obviously, w you should know that this area along Highway 37 is extremely, uh, extreme environmental sensitive area, so there's lots of uh, environmental issues and we want to be uh, um, cognizant of that and also take everything into consideration that we don't damage the environment as we make these improvements. So this is the segment between, as I mentioned, 101 and Black Point. We are also looking at extending that and taking that from Black Point all the way to the Sonoma Raceway, which is Highway 121 in Sonoma County. So as we begin the studies for this first segment, phase one, we will be re returning back to the California Transportation Commission in early 2020 and to ask for some additional funding so that we can continue the studies, the environmental studies and, and engineering studies for the phase two portion of that. Both phase one and phase two will probably take us till about 2023 to have a, an approved environmental document. Once that is approved, uh, we anticipate the design work may take a year, maybe a year and a half uh, to, to complete all the design work in the area. And then construction could begin, and I'm, these are very rough estimates, but could begin as early as 2025. So uh, I know that sounds like a long time, but in, in, in this environmental setting, that's actually very quick. That is very fast. And so um, we are hopeful that we will have uh, this roadway raised and uh, in a much better state than it is today by somewhere around 2025. And we do have a, a public information officer that is manning the emails, manning the phones, and taking questions as well as we go through this process over time. His name is Vince Jacala. This is his information. I would recommend if you have any questions, you can email him at that email address, call him on the telephone, and he would be more than happy to provide any information and details that you may have in the future. And with that, again, I want to thank the Senator, Supervisor, Mayor, thank you so much, and I will turn it back over to the Senators. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Director. That is why we wanted to be able to talk about both a short-term and a long-term vision uh, when it comes to the Marin section of Highway 37. The realities that we're faced is this. If the state were to start over, would we think to ourselves, is it smart to be able to build a highway in the middle of environmentally sensitive marshland? We probably would think twice if we were to do it over again. But they weren't thinking uh, in the uh, 1950s and 40s about the issue of environment. We are facing the reality, which is why we need to advance the short-term fixes to be able to hold back the floodwaters. And those dollars have already been secured and the materials are ready to go at a moment's notice as we have pre-positioned those materials and have the contract ready to go to be able to move forward on the improvements again in the next two weeks. Without further ado, we'd like to be able to go and do a big picture view of Highway 37. And that's where we're gonna be bringing in our Marin resident, uh, Andrew Vermeer. Uh, he is a Southern Marin resident and he is also with the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. He's the Deputy Executive Director for Operations and he is in charge of the next phase of Highway 37 from Sonoma Raceway to Vallejo. I'll turn it over to Andrew for his full briefing.
Well, good evening, everybody. Yeah, I'm not going to live down the fact that I announced publicly I'm a Marin resident, and uh, <laughs> you can find me in San Anselmo. It's a beautiful neighborhood. <coughs> yes, it does. I have a creek in my backyard as well. Uh-oh. Advancing is not the right idea. Can I get a little technical support? Well, while we get it set up, uh, it is a pleasure to be here, and I'll tell you, we've been really excited about the opportunity to work on this project and to try some creative ideas that we think are real important for moving the needle in transportation um, in the region. And I do want to thank my series of partners at the table because we really have created a partnership that I think keeps us really strong and keeps us communicating. Uh, this particular bridge corridor, this corridor, is uh, between four separate counties. There's all kinds of other federal and state jurisdictions that are engaged. And so the complications of the relationship were one of the first places that we put a lot of energy and are extremely happy um, with the way that is working. The first question is to really understand what is the challenge, and um, I think we all know what most of these challenges are, but what we've been doing probably for the first time since the road was built uh, in the early 1900s is doing some actual engineering work on this corridor, and we've been doing it as a group, and we've been advancing that work for the last several years, and we've learned an awful lot about it. A lot of it I think people recognize very easily. So for instance, in the top left, what you're looking at in terms of delay, we see as much as 100 uh, minutes of delay when you're leaving Marin and heading into the Vallejo area. It's pretty bad in the morning as well going in, so congestion is clearly a problem. Um, on the right, the flooding that's represented there is really something we talk about in the Marin side more directly, but I assure you the problem is just as significant and challenging and potentially as devastating on the Solano side uh, as well. There's quite a bit of different uh, special, special status species in uh, this particular corridor, and so we've been working very hard, hard with all of the different regulatory agencies that are associated with um, all the different species there. And as we've all learned from some of the studies that have been led by BCDC and others, uh, we do expect that a good portion of 37 will be underwater uh, several decades from now, and so we need to try to make sure that we address that as well. We, as a group, approved a, a corridor improvement plan in June of 2018, and it took a look at all of these items, and it tried to identify ways to make some immediate improvements um, in public works time, some midterm imp improvements, which I'll spend most of my conversation on, and then ultimately we are working at a plan uh, similar to Director Tavares that gets the roadway up and out of the, the current levee that it's in right now. So where are we talking about specifically? You saw this map earlier. We're talking about the blue now, segment B. Um, the work that we did in our quarter analysis really identified this as the top priority for dealing with a multitude of problems in the corridor. And so we've defined it from Sears Point really to Mare Island is the part of the work that we are most critically interested in in this particular project. And we're very happy to see all the efforts that are happening on the Marin side, but our focus is really here while everybody else is uh, is working on the, the other side. You know, we are taking a look at this thing comprehensively, though, because I think what we have seen over the years is if we don't do it comprehensively, we're not going to get consensus and we're not going to get anything done. We think uh, it's important to deal with the sea level rise problem. We think we have a little bit of incremental time to deal with it. Um, but all of our decisions and all of our near-term improvements need to consider that. Uh, so some of the work that's happening early around Sears Point and the Tole Creek area will be designed to get things up and out of the uh, expected sea level rise plain. We might not do that for the viaduct section that's uh, more in the, the Skaggs Island uh, to Mare Island area just because of cost and time, but we do think that we can get away with some near-term improvements that will improve congestion well. We know in the long run we've got to do something about multimodal opportunities. There's no great transit opportunities here today, but that's primarily because there's no advantage. If we can create solutions that provide advantages for uh, express bus or bus travel as well as high occupancy vehicles, we think we'll be in good shape. We know for a fact that more dense vehicle use uh, increases reliability um, and takes better advantage of the investment uh, for sure. We also know how important access is to the Baylands, and so we do see in the long term 
making good bike and pedestrian connections. In the short term, we want to do some improvements to some of the great investment that's already been there um, while we deliver some of the longer term improvements. So we certainly are all aware of that. And we also know what a struggle it is to pay uh, bridge tolls and things like that. So we are looking at different ways to deal with equity across the region. A lot of folks coming into the Marin County area are, are blue collar workers that, uh, you know, the wages matter and uh, we do want to be mindful of that. <coughs> Frankly, one of the things that got us interested in discussing this project after the private folks talked about delivering something was the idea that in a private solution you might not be able to or you might not be as interested in the traveling public and we, we think that that concern on equity does matter quite a bit as well. The other part of the project that we also find very exciting is the idea to try to break the project delivery paradigm. And I know there was a lot of groans and we had five to seven years, but that is actually relatively quick in uh, project delivery efforts. And so what we're trying to do is take a look at creative delivery methods that will allow us to move forward. And that work really started by getting environmental stakeholder and public outreach started early. So we have fully engaged the environmental community, uh, the joint policy committee that works uh, regularly, both in Sonoma, I mean, both in Solano and, and in Marin County, has done a really nice job of getting public input. We are taking all that information in and using it to help us understand what we can do early to get uh, support for some of the environmental work we're doing. Anytime you add congestion on a state highway system, especially in an environmental region like this, there's specific concerns about what are you doing to protect the environment. We would like to invest in the environment in a way that makes the project work um, as well as gives the community a real sense of trust that we aren't just going to come in and uh, put down blacktop and walk away from the environmental area. So our term has been integrate the work, don't mitigate. So we really are looking for options that will help us integrate solutions into the various projects that we're talking about. We do need to figure out how to pay for it though. Oops, I skipped a slide. Let me talk about what the solution is first. Um, what you see in the slide picture on the left is the existing levy, which is a two lane road. The irony is it was actually a toll road back in the early 1900s. Um, and so we do see a little bit of back to future in the solution. We are looking at two options in the environmental document, but they're both designed to really live as much as possible within the existing footprint. And so the examples that we're talking about in the middle picture are something like you see on the Golden Gate Bridge, where you squeeze in a third lane, you use a zipper truck that moves a barrier every day and provides capacity in the peak direction uh, morning and evening. That's a good solution, but it comes at an operational cost that is along for the entire ride of the project, and it takes quite a bit of time to move that rail um, across the road and get it open in time for the uh, next direction. But we do think it's a viable solution, and it minimizes the impact of uh, uh, investing in more uh, uh, highway at the current level that it's at. We also are exploring some design exceptions that we believe will allow it to work like the Richmond San Rafael Bridge does in the peak direction in the afternoons. So we would open up a second lane in the peak direction and forego that shoulder for the period of those commutes. That creates some operational issues that are a big concern to Caltrans and the Highway Patrol, but it gives us the capacity work that we're looking for. We would maintain most likely one lane in the non-peak direction, so that safety feature is still available to the folks that are keeping the system work well. The mechanism to pay for it, you don't get to do these big civil improvements. Uh, the viaducts that Tony showed and that uh, we would show in the future of our particular corridor are in the neighborhood of multiple billions of dollars and that money does not come very easily. So we do think and the policy committee has agreed that tolling solutions are going to be part of what we're looking to do. We would like to work with Senator McGuire and his peers up in Sacramento to adjust some legislation to allow us to build the Bay Area toll enterprise with an eighth bridge. In other words, create a strong enterprise that pools all the money together and allows us to do big significant construction and transportation projects for the region. The toll bridge retrofit pro or the toll bridge programs that we have um, you know, used from the toll revenue that comes in have done some wonderful things for the Bay Area transportation uh, dilemmas and we do think this is an opportunity. If the toll bridge opportunity doesn't work, we do also have an opportunity to work with the California Transportation Commission and work in other tolled environments that are already publicly legislated. 
So we do see an opportunity to solve the problem with a reasonable toll similar to what you see on the rest of the toll bridge uh, enterprise in the Bay Area. I want to close with the slide that I think is pretty depictive. It's a nice picture of what we're trying to do. I think it's very visually well done. So at the bottom, you see what's happening with sea level rise. It's going up, and we know it. Um, it's been very clear. It's been very evident uh, physically and as well as scientifically in terms of anticipating what's coming. We also have a timeline, and that timeline starts uh, on the left with today, and it moves into 2050 time frame before we can really get a final solution in there. What I've been talking about mostly in terms of the early benefits have to do with the shop improvements that the Caltrans folks are talking about doing, improvements at 37 and 121 and other things. We also see some other near-term improvements that we can do to make more traffic move through that existing system. And then the two ideas that we brought forward for additional capacity are also going to be done in that early benefit slide. We hope to have those up and running uh, in early 220, 222, 223, 224 and that particular time frame. And then ultimately keep working with the corridor, keep working with the community, um, try to find real ways to bring revenue because there will not be a toll structure that could cover the kinds of ideas that people would really like to see in this corridor to make permanent improvements. That's going to take on a lot more work by all the people at the table and I assure you we will involve Senator McGuire in that conversation uh, as well as maybe our federal partners. Thank you very much. Because he's a Marin resident, Andrew's going to hand out his cell phone, uh, <laughs> which he expects calls every morning uh, on all issues. Of Am I right, Andrew? Okay, there we go. I'd like to be able to end our panel presentations with what we call all hands on deck. There are, as you heard, multiple counties that uh, are part of the Highway 37 jurisdiction. And we have two representatives here tonight, Nick Wynn from the Transportation Authority in Marin and James Cameron from the Sonoma County Transportation Authority. Both have been on the ground working on a regional solution. And we'd like to better turn it over to Mr. Wynn and Mr. Cameron to be able to talk about the all hands on deck effort. Thank you, Senator. I'm gonna set up the slides we have here. Okay, Nick and I are going to talk to you about all hands on deck. Uh, as you're familiar with, Highway 37 truly has no good, uh, no good detour. Uh, the detours to the north on Highway 29, Highway 12, 116, or the detour to the south over 580 would both literally double your distance. You're going from essentially 20 miles to 40 miles regardless of which direction you travel, and both of those corridors are actually already congested, so they simply can't handle the traffic. That creates this partnership, this partnership of six major agencies, the four North Bay County Transportation Authorities combined with Caltrans and uh, MTC, which are here tonight. We formed a policy committee. The policy committee is primarily to address uh, expediting the funding, financing, and project implementation of the entire Highway 37 program, all uh, three segments, A, B, and C, across the entire North Bay uh, to address sea level rise, st you know, storm surges, the mobility, as well as any safety improvements for the corridor as well. It's also a public forum for outreach and input. I see some of the folks here tonight have spoken at the policy committee, and you're welcome to attend. It's a public meeting. Uh, SCTA's uh, Drew Nichols acts as the clerk of the board for that, and all the agendas are publicized. To give you a little more detail into what that policy is composed of, it's a series of 12, it's 12 elected officials, three from uh, those four North Bay counties, and then just a little bit of the background, it feeds into a project leadership team and then an executive steering team to develop those agendas and get that information out. Uh, the executive steering team is composed of the execs of our six agencies. The project leadership team is composed of Nick and myself from Transportation Authority in Marin and Sonoma County Transportation Authority, our counterparts at Napa Valley Transportation Authority and Solano Transportation Authority, uh, as well as our counterparts at Caltrans and MTC. With that, I will pass it over to Nick. Thank you, James. Good evening. Uh, I'm Nicholas Nguyen with the Transportation Authority of Marin. As James indicated, uh, the policy committee 
was created to coordinate all the planning activities of State Route 37. Since its formation, with the immense support of and leadership from dedicated officials such as Senator McGuire, Supervisor Arnold, and Mayor Lucan, the um, policy committee has accomplished a great deal of work, and um, the, the work that has been completed are uh, shown, uh, shown uh, in front of you. One of the most important uh, bodies of work that was produced out of, the corridor, uh, out of this uh, policy committee was the corridor plan that um, Deputy Director Vermeer had spoken about, which was adopted by the committee and lays out a vision for the whole corridor. And with a very broad brush, identifies projects that should be pursued within each of the three segments. For segment A in Marin, one of those projects is to look at ways to integrate levee management as a tool to protect Highway 37 from flooding and from sea level rise. In response uh, to this guidance, TAM partnered with Marin County Public Works and Flood District Zone 1 to evaluate the levees surrounding the highway to see what can be done to these levees to help further protect the highway, while also integrating ecological restoration features at the same time. The initial work began in March of this year and the team uh, is working in concert with the policy committee that we spoke about. We have leveraged local Marin dollars with state grants from Caltrans and from the Department of Water Resources to conduct much of this work. A public workshop will be conducted in late October or early November and findings and final concepts from our analysis will be presented to the policy committee in December. Uh, from uh, what we know so far is that the Marin Flood Zone District 1 has invested a lot of resources to the Novato Creek drainage basin, but much, much more is needed. And levee ownership in, the, in that area varies greatly. So we will continue to work on this uh, element of uh, levee management, and we'll come back to the group and the, and the public in December. Um, Senator, that's all I have. We're just, there we go. It's all good. We're just waiting to get it hot. Um, what we'd like to better do now is open it up. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wynn, Mr. Cameron, uh, for the presentation here. And as you can tell, uh, this has been an all hands on deck effort. Uh, and we need to be able to advance solutions sooner rather than later. Uh, and as we've heard, 2025 would be the earliest. Obviously, we're all gonna be working together to see if we can initiate a permanent fix sooner than that, but we also want to be candid with you about some of the obstacles that may be in our way, uh, which is why we're going to be initiating the environmental document immediately here in 2020 and moving forward on the short-term fixes, the drainage improvements, the floodgate improvements, the paving, pre-positioning flood wall, uh, as well as bringing in the pumps prior to the rainy season hitting to be able to keep that corridor open for the thousands of commuters each and every day. Most important part tonight is hearing from you. So if it works for everybody, we'd like to be able to come straight to you to be able to ask questions or if you have comments, like to have some conversations. And of course, we take criticisms as well. So let's open it up right now. Uh, please, I'm gonna come on over. If you don't mind just giving us your first name and uh, we are, uh, panelists are ready for questions and I'll just hold the mic. Good evening, sir, and thanks for being here. Okay, uh, I'm Jeff Rhodes. I'm with Resilient Shore in San Rafael. The question I have to, uh, to each of you is, what sort of uh, coordination is going on between the four different transit agencies in prioritizing North Bay transportation projects as part of the Faster Bay Area Bond Initiative? And where does uh, Highway 17, or excuse me, Highway 37 fit into that priority? No, thank you so much. So there is, uh, there is gonna be a potential initiative that's gonna be moving forward. Uh, that would be, if you will, a mega transportation bond focus on some of the largest transportation challenges in the Bay Area. Uh, and there has been a coordinated effort on that issue. Why don't we start with Andrew to be able to talk about the measure and then we could talk about how coordination is happening and how priority projects are being raised up. I know there's discussions in Sacramento, but let's start in the local level. Andrew, please. 
Yeah, I'd be happy to give it my best shot. Um, the information that is going on relative to the discussion on FASTER is working its way around the Bay, so it's not something that has been generated at the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. We are certainly watching it very closely, and we expect to get a presentation from the group that is proposing that program to move forward in October at the MTC in San Francisco. Um, so we'll certainly learn a lot more about what they're doing. In terms of coordination, the Bay Area transit systems, transport systems, is a very complicated mix of groups. So we have 27 something transit operators. We've got six different toll operators. We've got 101 cities and counties. Um, it's a complicated web of people that are trying to figure out what's the best way to move forward. The way we try to uh, communicate as a community in that group is to hold what we call the Bay Area Partnership Board meetings. They're public meetings where we discuss some of the issues at hand uh, faster when it gets developed. If it really does move forward, obviously we'll come forward to that particular group. And in that group, we try to figure out what's the best way to uh, evaluate the amount of revenue that might be coming into the region and how best to allocate it in a way that improves transportation for the region. I think what you've seen in the Bay Area over the years is a big investment in transit because we do see the future of the single occupancy vehicle is not the answer. And uh, what we will be overlaying onto most transportation problems and solutions will be ways to make multiple mode choices for the individual involving uh, trains uh, and buses and uh, taking advantage of all the extra capacity in single occupancy vehicles. Thank you, Andrew. Why don't we go to Caltrans and Tony Tavares? What Andy just provided was pretty comprehensive, and I just have to concur. Um, we work very closely with MTC and all the, the uh, congestion management agencies in the nine county Bay Area that I am responsible over. Um, with the FASTER program, I think the question also included where does 37 fall as a priority? Uh, as we were asked to provide potential projects for FASTER, and I know we've worked with MTC and others to come up with a list, 37 was on that list of potential projects that could potentially be funded by uh, a FASTER program if that does become, uh, and reaches fruition, if you will. Um, as Andy also mentioned, our goal to looking forward, uh, the single occupant vehicle and the single occupant driver is, uh, will become obsolete and we have to look for other modes. Of how do we move more people more efficiently through the existing state highway system and our local system as well? Throughout most of the Bay Area, um, as you get closer to San Francisco, get closer to the urban areas, we've widened everything that we can possibly widen for the most part. And we can no longer widen our highways. We have to become more efficient and look at other modes, whether that's transit, whether that's rail, whether that's other modes of transportation. And, and the governor recently just passed some legislation and also an executive order uh, directing us to reduce vehicle miles traveled on the state highway system. So we will be doing some pretty drastic things in the, in the coming future. Thank you, Mr. Director. Why don't we go to Supervisor Arnold and then we'll go to our next question. Yes. Um, Obviously, the secret is multimodal, and I serve on the SMART Board of Directors, and the state has given us money to do an initial uh, environmental look at the train going through Napa and ending up in Solano. And the tracks are there. Uh, obviously, they have to be redone. But this would be something that the, tr the, the train would leave Novato and then go uh, and end up at the uh, train depot in Susan City. So that is in the works and we have now uh, asked the state to look again uh, and see if they're interested in funding this further. Thank you so much, Supervisor. And I think the other important note on this is Regional Measure 3, which was passed overwhelmingly by uh, Bay Area voters last November. There's $100 million in that measure uh, to be able to focus on Highway 37. And then obviously, uh, there's going to be continued discussions with the California Trans Transportation Commission on advancing funding for Highway 37, both uh, in the most critical por portions, which is being flooded, 101 to Black Point, Black Point all the way over to Sears Point, and then the longer term vision, in which was uh, discussed by Andrew from MTC. Lauren, welcome. I'm glad you're here. We'll turn the floor over to you, sir. Thank you. My name's Lauren. I live in Black Point. I spent many years in the environmental community, so I count myself as an environmentalist, but I'm looking at a sea level marsh 
which will soon become the bottom of San Pablo Bay. And I'm looking at the money that you're proposing to spend on environmental work and the time that's going to be chopped up by it. And I'm frankly wondering if your environmental studies aren't essentially moot, or if not, could they not be expedited considerably given the fact that you're talking about an environmental study on the bottom of San Pablo Bay? Thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, Director Tavares, I know that Caltrans has been doing projections, whether it's 2050, 2100, um, and that has been a big focus for you, not just on 37, but on corridors throughout the, the coast here in the Bay. You wanna talk about that and how that environmental uh, is gonna be looked at? So obviously there's, there, as I mentioned during my presentation, there are many resource agencies that we have to work with throughout the corridor. And I would love to expedite the process, the environmental process, and we will uh, as much as possible. Uh, there was some legislation also passed, AB 1282, that was looking at bringing all the resource agencies together and developing a comprehensive plan over the entire corridor of Highway 37 and providing the environmental analysis, the environmental permitting, and the environmental needs and mitigation needs uh, for the entire corridor to help expedite the delivery of these projects. So that's still on the table. We're still working, uh, looking at that as an option of expediting that. There's also the federal process, which is NEPA, and there's a 404 process that allows a similar concept where you bring all the, the federal agencies together to uh, come up with the environmental mitigation in a more streamlined, more efficient manner so that we can deliver these projects as quickly as possible. Thank you, Mr. Tavares. I don't know, Mr. Cameron, Mr. Wynn, any items that you want to mention on the environmental side? I know this has been an issue that you've been focused on, whether it's 37 and other issues. So I could add that as part of the corridor plan that we did, as well as our design alternatives analysis, uh, we did look at the environmental factors for various different alternatives to segment B, and that details out uh, what we need to look at and that environmental process uh, that will take place. Um, I'd encourage you, if we could advance one slide, all of that information is available on the SCTA website. It would be the design alternatives analysis, uh, which you can you know, review that information in detail and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much. We'll get that slide advanced. Thank you so much, Mr. Wynn. Um, also, I'd like to uh, emphasize what uh, Deputy Director Vermeer had spoken about earlier. is the concept of, of integrate, not mitigate, and so the idea with environmental review and clearance of this whole entire corridor is to build in ecological restoration features, wetlands restoration, marshland rest restoration as a component to the uh, highway project. And so that together they, they, they are improved uh, and, uh, and they feed off one another. So that, that's the idea with the environmental clearance process on this corridor. Thank you so much, Ernie. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Ernie and I were just talking about the door has been opened, so we feel the cool air. Ernie, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, as part of uh, the flood control district, we worked on a Novato Creek uh, floodplain study. One of the things we tried to do was create detention basins, and in 2017, it became very apparent to uh, Dieter Stroh and I that if we don't widen the plug of mud underneath Highway 37 Bridge, and the Smart Creek Bridge and widen the Nomoto Creek, the water is gonna stay there and it's gonna flood, which unfortunately it has. I think that's something we need to look at in the short term, just for your benefit. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know we have a Caltrans team here also taking notes as well. Mr. Director, do you wanna to respond to that uh, with Ernie? Uh, just as you mentioned, I do have a Caltrans team in the back that um, is taking notes and, and we'll follow up on that. No, thank you so much, Ernie. Thank you for your work as well. We're going to come right over here to Councilwoman Eklund. We appreciate her being here. I know you wanted to say a few words. Please come on up. Hey, yeah, please, if you don't mind. Good evening. Thank you very much, Senator McGuire. And um, I first wanted to thank um, the Policy Committee for um, including the idea that I have been advancing for the past four to five years with that committee is the idea of the zipper. And the zipper trying to get this implemented as soon as possible. And we had a presentation on Wednesday to the uh, North Bay Division of the League of California Cities where they said that the environmental documentation is going to take seven years. I contend that the zipper could be implemented with a, like a mitigated negative deck. You would not need to necessarily do the entire 
CEQA or NEPA process because Caltrans has already informed us that they've got all the pavement for three lanes. It's just a matter of looking, going through the steps of the environmental analysis, which you could do with a mitigated document. And then, then it's the funding, which MTC and Caltrans and CTC comes in to get the zipper implemented because we are losing tons of economic value with the people losing all that time. So my question to you is, have you looked at a mitigated negative debt to implement the zipper? And if not, why not? And if you have, when can that be done? It, I would imagine it would take only take a year or two. And then let's get the money to get the zipper implemented. So people can start having two lanes going uh, in the direction that they want to go. Well, thank you so much, Councilwoman. So that zipper, as we all know, just uh, again, that zipper would be utilized from essentially Sonoma Raceway to Vallejo uh, and taking out that median barrier. I will turn it over to Andrew uh, to be able to comment on as well in regards to the potential. Uh, Mr. Vermeer. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate uh, Councilman uh, uh, Pat Eklund's comments. Yeah, I, I get confused about who's what sometimes, uh, but I, I do appreciate that. And, and I, I would think the question of whether it's a neg deck or not is probably not relevant for the immediate conversation, but we are working very aggressively with Caltrans to try to make sure that the environmental work we do is appropriate for the work that we're talking about at the time we're doing it. And so I think the commitment you'll get from both us and from Tony is that we are going to try to do that as best we can. Um, so if you took a look at the entire corridor, it might take you quite a bit longer to do an environmental document. If we can look at our projects a little more incrementally, maybe we'll have a much better solution. And that's what I am challenged to do, and I would support um, a much more accelerated environmental process to get some of these near-term improvements done. Thank you so much. Mr. Tavares from Caltrans, any items that you'd like to be able to add to that? I just concur with what, what Andy was just mentioning. Uh, we do want to expedite this as quickly as possible and, and streamline the process as much as possible. Thank you so much. We're now going to go to our next question. Thank you so much for being here. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Philippe Riley. I travel 37 every single day, sometimes seven days a week. Since 1991, I'll tell you, it, it has gotten worse and worse every day. And it's not just when it rains or when the highway floods. When this meeting started tonight, there were thousands of people sitting out there in bumper to bumper traffic. We all know, everybody in this room knows that anything that we're gonna have to do out on that road is gonna cost us. Let's not waste our time. You know you need the viaduct, you need the raised roadway. They need to be in separate directions, just like they do in every other water regional type of area. The Keys up north, the, the Gulf Coast, you name it. Those viaducts are so important to those areas, I can't believe that we have waited this long to even have that on the table. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, here you speak for so many, right, throughout the North Bay of having to be able to face this. Uh, and uh, believe me, help is on the way on this. So uh, I know we need to expedite it, though. I'm going to go to our next question, if it works for folks. Coming right over here. Sir, if you don't mind just standing for us. Good evening. I'm Mike. Nice to see you, thanks for coming. And if you don't mind, just giving us your first name and thanks for coming tonight. Uh, my name's Case, I am live in Santa Fe. We're, I really appreciate about the needing to raise the roadway and so on and that whole presentation. One thing that I first thought of is, what are we gonna, is there any way we can get rid of the signal light by some bypass? Because that's your bottleneck at the uh, Affinity Raceway turn. Is there anything in the plans that's not a roundabout, but you know, just something that's going to keep the flow going that direction and may need north south because every time you have, you can have all the other, well, we need to address the sea level, but also that's the plug is that stop. Is there anything in the plans to get rid of that stoplight? I think we need to get an amen. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to turn it over to Director Tavares uh, to be able to talk about what's happening with that stoplight because you're absolutely right. It is a jam point. Please, Director. So, so we do. Caltrans does have a project in, uh, in the programming or plan stage right now to improve the operations at that intersection. It will, um, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to take out the stoplight itself. 
It may be some other type of configuration in there, but it will improve the flow of traffic. It will improve the operational uh, aspects of that intersection. Do you want to talk a little bit about timing on that? Because I think that's going to be the next question, and what's your thought on that as well? I don't have that information. I don't know if my team in the back may have the timing. Why don't we do this? Why don't we come back to that? Sure. Um, and uh, the director's going to caucus with his team, and then we'll come back in regards to a uh, potential timing on that, if that's okay, Mr. Director. Uh, in the meantime, why don't we turn it over to Mr. Nell? Come on over, sir. Thank you for all your work on behalf of our schools. We'll turn it over. Great. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'm, I'm concerned with the, the, con the, your concern with single occupancy vehicles. I understand that's not the future. And I'd love to see the train go through there, but people are in single occupancy vehicles and three lanes or less, and somebody else is going to get out of their car. It's a big mistake. The bike lane on Richmond Bridge, instead of having a lane for our teachers and our staff to get into Marin and work in our schools is a big mistake. And, you know, just keeping it at three lanes with a zipper, uh, Pat, I understand you want to do that right away is a mistake and I don't think you can legislate behavior at this point. It's got to be two lanes each way at a minimum. People are not going to get out of their car for a long time and just stop talking that way. You know, it's, uh, we want to we see traffic moving. We want our workers here. We want our teachers to be able to get to work and you can social engineer somewhere else. Okay, thanks. All right. So I so I think just real quick, folks, um, so I, bottom line, and I'll let um, Mr. Vermeer or anyone else talk uh, about this as well, is that, look, just being honest about it, we're going to need to be able to have legislation to be able to create that toll road, right? So let's just say uh, we, need, we move forward with that in 2020. That's going to take a year, just being honest about it. Um, in the meantime, we need to be able to move forward with uh, a stopgap. That is going to be advancing the issue of bringing the zipper car over. And so in the morning, uh, what you would see, everything going westbound would have two lanes. In the evening, two lanes going eastbound. Mr. Nell hits the nail on the head though, whether it's issue of teachers or firefighters or police officers, sheriff deputies, we need to make sure that folks are able to get in and out of the North Bay. Um, it is going to take some time, and I know that is not popular, but it is going to take some time on the longer term solution. But this is why we're here tonight with this commitment, and I will share with you, we've not done this before, where you have the California Transportation Commission, Caltrans, Metropolitan Transportation Commission, the Transportation Authority Marin, the Sonoma County Transportation Authority, all saying, we got to get this damn thing done. We got to get it done yesterday. Um, we also understand that we're going to have to be able to go through the process of environmental engineering, but you are going to start seeing solutions implemented in an expedited manner, both on the Marin side, as well as Sears Point over to Vallejo. Um, but uh, I will turn it over to Mr. Vermeer if you want to be able to uh, comment on that, uh, because candidly, time is of the essence, and I think that we all feel that fire under our feet. So sure, I, look, I appreciate the concern that was raised and I don't think this is the forum to get into a debate on the subject. But I will say that what we have seen across the region is additional capacity brings additional congestion and that is a fact. We have also seen that a lot of the relatively low hanging fruit for congestion management such as pricing, um, such as ramp meters, such as commuter parking lots, things like that have done a real good job of operating offering opportunities for people to shift their mode. The question has always been, how do you make it such that there's a time advantage in it? And what we are seeing is that by moving the cars through high occupancy vehicle lanes, we are moving quite a few more people through a particular corridor. The math supports it. Um, we also do think that there are uh, real significant changes in terms of reliability. For the most part, folks are interested in reliability. They want to know how long it takes them to get from point A to point B. What we've seen on very unusual holidays, we've talked about this before in Marin. In fact, uh, I think that's where it was established. I was a Marin County resident. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the idea that if you could get 3 to 5% of the people to change their behavior, that's not social engineering. That's a very small amount of people. You see up to a 50% change in congestion in terms of favorable, more reliable commutes. 
what we're saying is that we do think a small amount of mode shift, if we can provide the time advantage to people, we can get a small amount of people to change their uh, basic travel patterns. And that in and of itself creates a great opportunity for saving commute time. That's the extent of the discussion. Thank you very much. But I think that we can all acknowledge folks have a right to be frustrated just because of how long this has been. But again, I think that's why we are all here tonight, all high ends on deck to be able to get these projects moved. Let's go to the supervisor and see if the mayor has to any To add to that, I, uh, as you probably know, MTC has opened up the bike lane coming uh, west on the bay on the Richmond Santa Fe Bridge and we're now lobbying f to use the shoulder uh, for car for cars opening up the, the cars can use the bike lane coming west and we're now lobbying to say use the bike lane going south just during commute hours and then opening it up to bikes thank you so much supervisor um, mayor was there an item that you want to bring Nick, was there, did you want to jump in there? Anything for Mr. Tavares? Uh, let's go over to Eric for our next question. Hi, uh, my name is Eric. I live right off of Olive uh, here in Nevada, so I get the traffic when it goes by. Um, I have a few questions. I, first, I would li like to comment and appreciate that there will be a bike lane on this. Uh, I would love to bike to Vallejo. Um, so here's my questions. Uh, when will be estimated, you know, give or take a year or two, when will I be able to bike to Highway, or 121, so I can get to Sonoma faster from Black Point? When can I go all the way to Vallejo on Highway 37? Um, and then when will the bridge lane be open? It was supposed to open last November for the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, Eric has uh, some really good questions. Who would like to be able to kick us off? Um, Mr. Director, why don't we start from the bottom up uh, and um, Richmond Sanford Bridge. You want to talk a little bit about that? <laughs> I just want to let you know the director is really excited to comment on this right now. So <laughs> uh, we'll turn it over to Director Tavares. So it is a partnership project with MTC Bata, yeah. and uh, we've been working closely with them to develop not only the the lower half of the uh, deck of the bridge where we have the operational improvement for the uh, eastbound commute in the afternoon, but on the upper deck we have the, the bike lane project that's, that's moving forward. Um, it's almost complete in my understanding. Uh, there's still some more work to be done. There is a, a barrier that needs to be placed on, on the deck itself. Yeah. Um, and then I believe there's a, a little bit of work that has to be done on the Marin County side as you come off the bridge. Um, once those issues are completed or those, those activities are completed, um, I would think that we'd be moving to opening that up. Anyone else want to comment on that one piece of questions? Andrew. Sure. Um, what we're talking about for the pilot project that is to uh, examine the use of public access on the Richmond Bridge, we do anticipate an opening it towards the end of November of this year. Um, we are also working with Caltrans <laughs> to take a look at the long-term health of the bridge. Um, we work with Caltrans directly on maintaining and operating all seven bridges in the state in the Bay Area. And part of that work does involve trying to make sure that the health of the bridge is in good shape. So while it's very easy to talk about the bridge being three lanes in both directions, that was a very different time. Vehicles weighed differently, traffic volumes were less, the bridge was younger, there was no freeway on either end, um, so there was quite a bit less traffic that actually got to the bridges at the time. We are uh, very cognizant of the concerns over moving more people across that bridge corridor. We're also working on a series of projects called Richmond Forward, which is designed to provide more improved uh, access through the toll plaza um, and to try to relieve some of the congestion that's on that particular side of the bridge. What we do all know, though, is that getting over the bridge is one thing, but if you move a lot more traffic into the Marin side, the Sir Francis Drake area, that particular part of the San Rafael uh, area cannot handle that volume of traffic. So we're looking at all kinds of different things. Uh, all electronic tolling is part of our solution to eliminate the cash uh, stopping at the deck, uh, trying to find ways to make the bus system work a little bit better and also to provide uh, improvements for the high occupancy vehicles. I think the question was also about uh, bike access on the 37 corridor. 
As I mentioned, segment B, which we're working on, we don't anticipate immediately getting bikes all the way to Vallejo. So we would like to invest in maybe making some of the smaller improvements that already exist. There's some beautiful connections of the Bay Trail um, that exist in that part of the region. We want to continue to work on those. We do know that when we get the ultimate project done and if we can find a way to do something creative uh, in the interim, we would support it because we do think it's a good bike uh, and pedestrian corridor. You know, the, the thing about bikes is they really have changed. They've gone from a recreational solution to a real transportation solution, especially with the e-bike. We've seen that the radius of riders has almost doubled or even tripled. And we do think that, again, talking about my three to five percent, if we can move a few percentage points um, with particular transportation moves like that, we think we'll be partially successful. And you add these things together and they make a difference. Thank you so much, Andrew. Eric, you good on those respond? Thank you so much. Mr. Director, I want to go back to the question on the stoplight there. Uh, the stoplight, um, as you hit the railroad tracks going on, I'll call it to the, the Sears Point to Vallejo section. I think you had some information. So that project is in our 10-year uh, shop plan to be delivered. Uh, so it would be in the latter years. So we're probably looking about five years out on that to, to have the complete operational improvements completed. All right. Uh, thank you so much. We're going to go to another question right over here, and then I promise you we're going to come over to the other side of the room. Good evening, sir. Thank you for being here. If you can just give us your first name. Terry. Um, I heard of your sensitivity to people commuting to work on 37, and I also heard of a toll road of some sort. So I'm trying to reconcile those two things and understand what's involved financially. Andrew, you want to talk about the, the Vallejo side? Sure. Um, Thank you. So independently, the Bay Area Toll Authority has done uh, traffic analysis in terms of a revenue assumptions, and we matched them up with some work with the Joint Policy Committee did that was a lot more in depth. In both cases, what we found is that a toll revenue stream consistent with the current toll revenue stream that you see on the Bay Area bridges will generate about $700 million over a long period of time. That's not enough to do some of the major improvements that people have been talking about for the long, long term. But it's a pretty good down payment on some significant improvements. The other thing that that number uh, identifies, which I personally think is extremely important, is it covers the operations and maintenance nut for that investment. Anything that we are doing in the Bay Area toll bridge region, we are making sure that we're investing in the long term operations and maintenance of facilities. So they not only open sooner, but they work well and hopefully look good. All right, thank you so much. We're going to turn it over to Ed. Ed, uh, come on up. Thank you so much for being here. Go right ahead. Uh, Ed Schultz, uh, Novato. Um, I commuted on Highway 37 for 36 years. I know it intensely. To me, we've got problems right now. Highway 101 to Black Point, fix that now, which you're working on. The second thing is Andy. You've got a restricted orifice, that whole bit from Mare Island and Sears Point, and that's where our problem is today. And I don't know if you can do a zipper or whatever you have to do, but phase two, this that hasn't got a problem between Black Point and Sears Point. That hasn't flooded. It's four lanes, two lanes each way. It works. Fix the first part there, the flooding, and the second, Andy, yours. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Ed's all over it. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if we need comments on that, but um, I think we got thumbs up all around. Please. And uh, Joseph was just saying it is still backed up on 37 even as we speak here tonight. So uh, obviously we need to be able to do, get this thing done. We're going to turn it over to Christine. Christine, good evening. Thank you for being here. The floor is yours. Hi, um, Christine Van Dyke, resident of Novato, also off 37. So I've been affected directly by the flooding and then the rerouting of traffic along Atherton. So I guess my concern is for this coming project, what type of resources are you going to put in place to mitigate the effect to the homeowners as these people use ways and all their maps to drive through our neighborhoods and then Atherton turns into a freeway. I mean, literally, I've watched a family of mallard ducks get hit and killed the deer and then what's next people this guy riding his bike is going to become a victim of somebody because they're pissed off about their commute and i just hope that there's some additional enforcement and everything not only that it's the litter these aren't people that are residents of our community so as they're stuck in traffic and they're doing whatever things get pitched out the window i personally go around and pick up all of these things in my neighborhood 
And it's really irritating to see like the influx of this just in that episode of flooding and all of these people now using our area as their thoroughfare. So I'm really hoping that that gets addressed by the city of Novato and for the rest of us because we have to suffer through this. I'm gonna turn it over. Thank you so much, Christine. I think we're, which is why th there's been such an emphasis on making sure that we are able to move forward on these temporary repairs, right? So that's why we're gonna pre-position the flood wall. That's why you're gonna see the paving uh, on uh, about two thirds of a mile here coming up over the next couple of weeks, the enhanced drainage, bringing in the pumps as well as the floodgates. So once it's avoided, please stop back or push back on me. You are then inundated with traffic, I've seen it, uh, and it is more than frustrating and it's also dangerous. So our top goal here is for this winter, no matter the size of the rain event, to keep the corridor open. Um, and that is what our top goal here is in the coming few months. Uh, but I'm going to turn it over to the mayor. I uh, think you already called me. <laughs> <laughs> I go. know all about it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Please, and, Mr. And, mayor. And I know during the, the last closure I spoke with several residents, I know our entire city council did. Um, I'm very encouraged by what we're hearing tonight that the corridor, if all these, go in, all these measures go into place, we would not see in a closure. Um, if there is a, a catastrophic flooding event that happens, it's very difficult on the city because in addition to a closure of Highway 37, it usually means there's other flooding in other parts of the city as well. Um, but I know that th from the last closures, uh, our city has learned a lot on how to respond. I'm great to see uh, some of our partners from the California Highway Patrol here as well. It takes a, a whole effort of everybody coming together to help with traffic control. But I know during the last event, I had a real scare driving through parts of Novato and seeing cars stopped on the smart tracks um, because they're coming through Novato, they're using ways, they're not familiar with it. We put out uh, message boards that said, please don't stop on the tracks. Uh, so our city is, is prepared to do whatever they can to provide the safety measures as well. But I think the big picture is that uh, the corridor should be open uh, this entire winter uh, if all of this goes according to plan. So. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. We're gonna turn it over to Seth momentarily. Just wanna acknowledge uh, the good folks from Marin TV who are here. They just celebrated their 10th birthday, by the way. Uh, and you'll be able to see this uh, here coming up on Marin TV. But we're gonna turn it over to Seth. Hi, Seth, uh, live here in, in Nevada, commute to Martinez every day on Highway 37. In the immediate future, can we get some fresh reflective paint and fresh reflectors on Highway 37? It's extremely challenging to drive that in the mornings when it's really dark, especially in the rain, the uh, my the way I get through it now is to actually try and speed up to the car in front of me so I can follow where they go. You literally can't see where you're going most of the mornings. Thank you. No, Seth, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Mr. Director, let's talk about that issue along the corridor, please. Yeah, mo most definitely, I appreciate that comment. So my maintenance forces do get out on an annual basis to refresh the striping on our uh, roadways throughout the Bay Area. I will make that a note and, and have that as a priority to have that completed as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Seth. Very grateful. We're gonna go to Jan here. Good evening, Jan. If you don't mind standing for us just so we can get you on camera as well. Good evening and thank you for being here tonight. Hi, uh, my name's Jan. I live in Novato and I was just curious, we sort of sidestepped. What is the toll cost? What are these people going to have to pay? They're as you say, they're the teachers, they're the firemen, they're the whatever. Uh, these are the blue, a lot of blue collar workers. What is it going to cost to go? And we want this, and we'll, we're glad to pay for it. But what's it going to cost every day for these people? Uh, Jan, Jan brings a, a really good point up. What I'll say is it, it has yet to be determined. So the process to be able to establish a toll road is that we're actually going to have to pass legislation to be able to advance a new toll road here in the Bay Area. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Andrew to be able to talk about how the, uh, the pricing would potentially work, if that's okay, uh, Jan, as well. So no formal decision has been made as of yet. Andrew. Yeah, no, I appreciate that um, ex explanation because it, this is early in the game for sure. But, but our philosophy, our goal has to uh, have it apply very similar to the rest of the toll bridges. So each of the bridges has its own toll structure, but they're very similar. Uh, Golden Gate is its own entity. They can do their own things. They support quite a bit more um, with their toll structure in terms of operations than we do. We do primarily capital improvement projects for transit and for highways and then bridge operations. But um, our, our assumption is that as long as it's consistent with the terms that you see on the regular state-owned toll bridges, that's a reasonable price for the value that you get for that structure. 
Um, we thought that was a very important element that it's still owned by the public in terms of how you make those decisions. Uh, it's a very public discussion on what they might be, uh, but we absolutely acknowledge that you know a toll structure needs to be in line with what folks can afford, but in order to get the improvements, we have to pay for it somehow, some way, and we think it's a pretty efficient way to do it. The discussion that we've had publicly over the last few months is moving the toll bridges to all electronic tolling. Part of that is efficiency in terms of moving cars through it, but we also think it's an opportunity to deal with pricing maybe in a different way and uh, uh, potentially do peak pricing that would also assist in moving a small amount of people outside of the peaks. Um, but the idea is to keep it within the ranges of all the existing toll bridges if we move down that path. The so current bridges are. Andrew, I'm going to have you repeat the question, making sure that oh, we sure. get it on camera as well, please. The question was, what is the toll structure? Um, in general, it's about a seven dollar toll today. Uh, RM3 brings it up a dollar uh, over the next couple of years, um, and so that is the expected toll in 2025 is nine dollars. It's currently seven dollars. Um, you know, when you look around the United States, it's actually a pretty, pretty reasonable uh, amount of money. And when you look at the projects that it directly delivers, it's a pretty impressive group of projects. In fact, the $100 million that is coming from Ridge Measure 3 is bridge toll money. Also, Senator McGuire, we have in our rehabilitation program an additional $20 million that is identified for the 37 corridor. And again, it comes out of the existing toll structure from the current seven bridges. The point is that those seven bridges do generate a bunch of revenue that we invest directly in transportation improvements in the region. We've talked about it at Joint Policy Committee meetings and other meetings about the series of projects that have been delivered with that, and I think they are pretty impressive for the region. Thank you so much. Let's go to Supervisor Arnold, please. Yes, I just want to speak to the agencies that are here and let you know that over the past several years, two different companies have come to me with a plan for building a causeway on 37. And I'm just, if any of you are interested, I'm happy to put you in touch with them if especially it would be paid for by toll, but would it be, would it be cheaper to do a public-private partnership? And it, if so, call me. Okay. Thank you. you know, Quickly, Andrew, and we have please. One thing to that, because I, I think it's a very interesting question. People talk about P3s as an opportunity, but you still need to make a profit if you're the P3 investor. And part of our logic with and it P3's being public-private uh, public partnership. Public -private partnership, where somebody comes in, a private entity, and builds a road for the citizens, they have really unfettered toll setting authority at that point, and they don't have a lot of public scrutiny. The benefit of a public bridge is you have locally elected officials that are part of those authorities that make those decisions, and um, you also are less motivated by the profit motive because, as we all know, the public doesn't make a lot of profit in the public agencies. So we think that that's a significant difference, but we do like the idea of public-private partnerships to deliver projects faster. And I'll tell you, that's a place, uh, Supervisor Arnold, that we would like to go. We'd like to break the project delivery paradigm by using private resources, but minimizing the impact of the public investment. All right. We have time for a couple more. Come on up. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, I'm Sylvia Barry, and I'm a Novato res resident. Uh, I have a question uh, related to 37, not quite related to the project you're talking about, but I'm very concerned about the intersection of 101, 37, and uh, Novato Boulevard coming in. And I, every time I come here, I try to um, mention that. Now we have Ola expert here, so I hope we can kind of talk about it, what kind of plan we might have. Thank you so much. Uh, do we want to hear from uh, Caltrans director? And just want to make sure, so the concern, talk to us about a little bit of the concern, please. I'm, I'm really concerned about the daily uh, congestion we have doing, yeah, the backup. I mean, even right now we have that, but I don't hear it addressed anywhere. Coming off the highway, I believe, right, is one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, in, in 101. So uh, any thoughts on that? I know that this, I know my traffic operations team is looking at that, and they'll have to do a study and, and, and determine what the next steps would be in that, in that situation. If you want to give us uh, your number, and Carrie yeah. Lindecker or Carol Mills will give you uh, our card as well, and we'll follow up with you if that's okay. 
All right, thank you so much. We'll get that. We have time for a couple more. We're going to come right over here. Good evening. Thank you so much for hanging with us so long. Eric, I apologize if you don't want to come on over. It's nice to see you. Come on out, Candy. Thank you for yep. being here. You're welcome. I have a comment and then uh, a question. And my comment is, hi, Pat. Um, I think that one of the things that the partnership needs to include uh, housing, because I think when I heard the gentleman that was sitting here at the end, his comments about uh, all of the teachers and et cetera coming into the county to work, I think one of the problems that needs to be addressed right along with congestion is the reason we have the congestion, and to me that is affordable housing, and that's true all over the Bay Area. If people could live and work in their same communities, uh, that would help eliminate it. The other observation I have is on toll roads, not, not just uh, the Highway 37, but like in the East Bay where I have family and I go over that direction, they have a lot of areas of their freeways that are toll roads, and with family that I have down south, same thing. Always the comments that I hear, yes, it does move certain traffic into the, the toll lanes and helps reduce congestion, but it's for a certain group of commuters, and that would be the people that uh, are a little better funded. So it doesn't really help, uh, you know, the, 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 t the people that we are addressing and talking about tonight. So those are my two comments. My question, and maybe I missed this in part of the presentation, but I live in Bahia, which is off Atherton Avenue, which gets an awful lot of the, when, when 37 is closed, traffic diverts there and causes a great deal of congestion and it's trouble for me to get my grandkids to school. But my question is around the project that you mentioned that's gonna be worked on in the next few weeks. Will that involve any closure of the roadway and diversion of traffic? Do I need to? you know, prepare for that. Great question, Candy. So let's talk about that uh, paving work, Mr. Director, that you're gonna be moving on on that two thirds of a mile, raising it up about a foot. Uh, you looking at night work on that? Are you gonna look at, uh, talk to us about what the public can expect in regards to either delays or any closures? So we'll, we'll try to complete the work on the off-peak time so we're, we don't wanna impact the commute in that direction. Uh, we'll be raising the westbound direction of 37 by a foot for about uh, two thirds of a mile. So uh, it'll be off peak times, it may be at night also. The idea is try to get the work done as quickly as possible before the rains hit. And so uh, that's the, the, the goal is to get that work done, get all the drainage work done completed as well before the end of October. And so there will be some work happening uh, during the day, daylight hours and possibly at night as well. But for example, um, you will not be doing the work during commute times whether it's eastbound or westbound you will avoid that we will avoid the commute hours to not impact the traffic as much as possible no, that's great i'm going to go to candy here with the follow-up yeah, just a little add-on because uh, we have there's hundreds of homes that are impacted by this atherton diversion of traffic and even though we're going to accomplish this before the rains and i know that that's all uh, that's all good and well Right now we're in fire season. That's our main evacuation route. So that's right now the concern I look at when there's closures there. And I've had to, you know, take 30 minutes to go three blocks. And during that time, people that are getting frustrated are going passing on bike lanes. It's just, you know, a very, so anyway, there's, there's I know we gotta get ahead of the, the flooding situation, but we also have to be, cognizant of evacuation routes in the in the season that we're in so that concerns me thank you so much thank you all right we have time for one more we're gonna do one more and then we're gonna ask our panelists to be able to provide some closing comments hey what's going on Anthony thank you so much for hanging with us so late I'm gonna turn it over to you hi, hi good evening um, I have a very specific question especially by highway 37 and 121 one smart comes in because there have been talks already between Novato and Sassoon City Fairfield. What will you do to actually address the potential congestion at that particular railroad crossing? Because you, not only you have the traffic light problem, but also the railroad crossing. And if you have both of them running, that'll cause severe headaches, not only for westbound travelers from Vallejo in the morning, but also for eastbound travelers heading towards Sonoma and Vallejo in the evening. No, thank you so much, Anthony. 
So I think, and I don't want to speak for either uh, Director Tavares or uh, um, Andrew there, but I think long term, going to have to be able to, if we see passenger rail going out that uh, direction, for example, um, and candidly, uh, we need to be able to get smart up north, which is critical, priority number one, would make sense to be able to get it over to Vallejo. I don't want to speak for anyone at smart, that's just uh, me speaking here tonight. Need to be able to configure it so it doesn't impact that traffic, right? Uh, like we see in uh, in some cities. Uh, I think that's something that, uh, thinking about, Andrew, you want to uh, touch on this, especially on that critical portion? Well, I, I don't want to speak directly for SMART either, but I agree that would be a problem that you can't create. So, you know, typically the way that's handled is grade separations. Grade separations cost a lot of money. That's how that would have to be configured, most likely to avoid any congestion. Uh, but I would defer to the SMART folks and to Caltrans right now for that particular part of the corridor. That's great. Uh, and more to come, Anthony, on that one. I think uh, I'll turn it over to the director, but uh, it, it's absolutely critical that we, I believe, get it over to Vallejo and do that without impacting commuter traffic. Uh, Mr. Director, any items you want to talk about that or uh, Supervisor Arnold and Mayor Lucan? So I would agree that it's, uh, you know, I don't want to speak for SMART either, but uh, having the, the commuter rail through this corridor will be a, a, a critical function. I think it's important that, it, that we have that rail option for the future also. And as that does cross uh, Highway 37 near 121, as Andy mentioned, we typically would look at some type of grade separation, whether that's a, a structure that goes over 37 or 37 goes over the railroad. And we would look at that in the future. Supervisor, any items on this one? I just want to say, um, in, in case anyone from Sonoma is here and is wondering, oh, oh what happened to Hillsburg and, and Cloverdale, SMART is going to go to Hillsburg and Cloverdale uh, before or at the same time as they go east. Thank you. Being from uh, Northern Sonoma <laughs> County, uh, very grateful for that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it is critical. And uh, SMART is moving $20 million. Uh, we've been able to work with SMART on the state funds to be able to get $20 million uh, to Windsor, which is great going from this the airport. Next year, yeah, yeah, within the next year. Um, ladies and gentlemen, want to say thank you so much uh, for the conversation here tonight. If you'd be okay with this, we'd like to be able to provide each of our presenters uh, to be able to provide closing comments. Um, in the long-term plan, there is uh, a plan for grade separation at that intersection, so there is a plan for that. Um, but I'd like to be able to turn it over to the supervisor. And again, Supervisor Arnold has been tenacious on this issue. Uh, she carries a two-by-four. Uh, and reminds us of this critical issue each and every day. She's been an incredible partner to be able to work with. This would not have happened without her, and I'd like to better turn it over to the supervisor for closing comments, and we'll go down the line. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think you could tell by, by uh, the senator that he, he wins the prize for the biggest, the most energy and the most determined, and it's been a pleasure to work with you. Um, I want to thank the agencies that were here. I know we've worked with you. I know you've been very generous in your funding for things that we need, and thank you for being here. Um, the only thing really, well, and I want to thank all of you. You've had some great questions. You were a great crowd, and it's just, this was a really nice event to bring you all together. And we'll keep this up and let you know where we stand. The only other thing really that I would end is the thing that, w that, that we didn't talk about because we're not ready to is looking at the levees because we know that those are a, a real source of, of, flo of flooding also. Um, when we did our introductions, I, I didn't see and I didn't mention that uh, County Public Works is here. And County Public Works is working diligently on the levees. Uh, this also involves SMART, it involves uh, Public Works, it involves uh, the, uh, Caltrans. So soon, we will, be, we will all meet together, all the people that are connected with the levees, and talk about it, and then hopefully be able to get back to you with, with uh, some suggestions for a fix. Because as the mayor said, when, when, 30, when 32 floods, it floods other places in Novato, and that's from the levees. Thank you anyway, thank you all. Thank you, Supervisor. 
Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, I'll just keep it very brief. I want to thank everybody for coming and attending tonight, sharing your thoughts, your feedback, your questions. Uh, I know as we talk about this and you hear some things like three years, four years, five years, uh, it seems like a long time. But I want to assure you, and I can say this on behalf of the City Council and think on, uh, Council, Council Member Eklund and the whole Council, the reason why we are moving at this pace, as it might seem slow to you, it, it's fast to us, is because we have Senator McGuire doing amazing work for us, representing Novato, representing right. our residents, and <laughs> he is moving mountains in Sacramento and getting the dollars needed so that uh, we can address this issue. And I can't thank you enough for hosting this town, town hall here. Uh, the entire city council, we are grateful to have your representation in Sacramento. Thank you. So much. Mr. Lucan, you have been amazing to be able to work with in the entire council. And truly, this has been a 100% team effort. So just want to say thank you for the amazing partnership that we've had over the past four years. We'd like to better turn it over to the California Transportation Commission. Yeah, thank you again for uh, having us here. And also, thank you all for uh, coming out here and for sticking here, staying here the whole time. Uh, I just want to say we look forward to working with our partners as the, prog as the project progresses as it uh, starts to really crystallize and really looking at to see what the funding plan is and how we can help. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you for the 10 million, and next time you come, yeah. you need to bring another 10 million. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Exactly. Every time Mitch comes in, uh, there's gonna be a toll to get Mitch Weiss through for $10 million. <laughs> so there we go, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. There is only nine million. All right, let's turn it over to uh, the district director. And again, Tony, really grateful uh, for your hard work on this one. Uh, and working with us in Sacramento to be able to get this thing done. And I'll turn it over to Tony Tavares. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Senator, Supervisor, Mayor. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Uh, I think having us all here shows that we're taking this very seriously. Highway 37 is a high priority for Caltrans. It's a high priority for MTC and our partners here at TAM and, and Sonoma County as well. And um, we feel very confident that we're in a much better place this year, as I mentioned earlier, than we were in previous years. We have uh, measures in place right now. We will get some work completed to uh, make that section of 37 even more, uh, uh, less vulnerable, if you will, to flooding in, in the coming months. So I'm excited that uh, the senator put this town hall together. I'm excited the work that's going to happen, uh, not only the interim work, but the, the future um, uh, phase one and phase two work as well. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Yeah, thank you, Senator McGuire, and I just want to thank the audience as well. I appreciated your questions, and I assure you, your questions were easier than Senator McGuire's are in a dark room. So, uh, <laughs> and I also just want to remind folks, it's not just 100, it's $120 million that the Bridge Toll Authority has brought to this particular corridor. So I think Mitch has some work to do. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Throwing it down, Mr. Weiss. <laughs> but no, look, I tell you, my staff that's in the back and the folks that we're working with on this table are really excited about this corridor. There's been more work done in the last couple of years in this corridor that's been done in 50 years, and it really is part of a partnership. Um, I just find it a very exceptional challenge to work on as well. I'm really proud to have an opportunity to work on it. I look forward to uh, making your commute a little bit easier if I can do my uh, all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's turn it over to Mr. Wynn, Transportation Authority Marin, and want to say thank you for the partnership, sir. Sure. Thank you, uh, Senator McGuire. Um, not, not only is uh, su our, uh, Supervisor Arnold and um, Mayor Lucan are your mayors and supervisor, they're also uh, the directors, uh, board directors of TAM. And so they're, in effect, my boss. And so whatever the priorities, whatever their priorities are, they're my priorities. And I can tell you that at the policy committee level, uh, TAM is your voice. Um, when it comes to this particular corridor. I, and I, I realize that you uh, can certainly come to these, these meetings and have your own individual voices, but just, uh, just know that TAM has your back and will support whatever is in the best interest of Marin at these policy committees. Thank you so much, Mr. Wayne. Let's turn it over to um, Mr. Cameron from the Sonoma County Transportation Authority. Thank you for inviting the SCTA tonight and just looking forward to the continued partnership of our six agencies and moving some of these projects into construction. Thank you so much. So the, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Cameron. So the bottom line is this, we'd like to be able to, we wanted to be able to bring everyone together to make sure that we're on the same page. Same page as we move into the winter months, knowing that we are pre-positioning and ready to respond to even the worst storms that are gonna be coming up here in 2020. So we have that short-term plan in place and it is fully funded. Uh, the second phase 
is also fully funded with the 10 million for the environmental and the engineering related to Highway 101 to Black Point. The next step in 2020, Caltrans will be going to the California Transportation Commission to be able to secure additional funding from Black Point to Sears Point, right there at that famous stoplight. Um, again, it is because all agencies, multiple counties and cities are working together that we're finally here. Uh, and you deserve better when it comes to your commute. Uh, and you have good times. The Ukrainians are now invading uh, here. Um, let's not actually go there. Oh my goodness. So, uh, so bottom line is uh, it is all hands on deck. And it's not just tonight. It's going to be for the months and years to come. We need to get this done. There's a few thank yous. We'd like to better say thank you to Supervisor Arnold and her incredible team. Thank you so much for co-hosting tonight. We want to say thank you to the City of Novato for actually hosting us here uh, and to Mary Lucan and the City Council. We want to say thank you to Robert Moda. He is the captain of the Marin Division of the California Highway Patrol. Uh, Mr. Moda has been out morning, noon, and night during the flooding, making sure that everyone is taken care of uh, and safety is first priority. Thank you so much to the CHP and Mr. Moda. It's good to see you. I think you are on vacation as well. I did not think you were going to be here, so uh, thank you for taking the time, my man. It's really good to see you. We want to also say thank you to the team that helped put tonight together. We want to say thank you to Carol Mills. Carol Mills works in the Civic Center. We are so grateful that she is here tonight and for all of her work. We want to say thank you to, to Carrie and to Carleen and to Andrea and Emily uh, for all of their work to be able to help make tonight a success. We want to say thank you to the Senate media team who is here early, making sure that it all got done uh, and keeping the Ukrainians at bay. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, very much uh, as well. And I also want to say thank you to our legislative partners. I want to say thank you to Assemblymember Mark Levine uh, for his work on this issue and to Senator Dodd. Senator Dodd represents the Vallejo side and he is just as anxious and wanting to be able to get a permanent fix moving on Highway 37 as well. And I want to say thank you to those two gentlemen. We'd like to be able to update you next year. Obviously, we'll be putting out uh, announcements when the work is completed and done, working with Caltrans. And we'd like to be able to come together next year uh, to be able to provide an update on the project. Would you all be willing to come back out? All right. Thank you so much for coming. And we'll be hanging around for any individual questions. Thank you for your time.